friends welcome to midlife today we are going to study about brachial plexus which is one of the most important topic of upper limb so what is brachial plexus brachial means brachium or arm and plexus means collection of nerves so brachial plexus is the collection of nerves in the region of arm and little bit on the pectoral region also so the plexus consists of roots trunks divisions cords and branches roots and trunks are supraclavicular part divisions are retroclavicular part and cords and branches are infraclavicular part we can remember this by using mnemonics such as right decibel from r it is roots from t it is trunks from d it is divisions from c it is cords and from b it is branches now let us see about roots these are constituted by the anterior primary rami of spinal nerves c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 with contributions from c4 and t2 as well so what is anterior primary rami so here i will explain about anterior primary rami so let us take the transverse section of spinal cord the gray matter lies at the center of the spinal cord whereas the white matter lies at the periphery of the spinal cord so these are the horns left and right horns when these horns come out they form the anterior as well as posterior root and when the root meet they form the spinal nerve so let us consider that we took a segment from spinal nerve c5 so it will be c5 spinal nerve and uh, when these spinal nerve divide they form the anterior ramus and posterior ramus anterior ramus is also known as ventral ramus and posterior ramus is also known as dorsal ramus so the main thing is that the origin of brachial plexus takes place from the anterior primary rami of spinal nerve c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 now let us come back to the root the origin of the plexus may shift by one segment either upward or downward resulting in a prefixed or postfixed plexus respectively in a prefixed plexus the contribution by c4 is large and that from t2 is often absent and in a postfixed plexus the contribution by t1 is large t2 is always present c4 is absent and c5 is reduced in size now the roots join to form trunks as follows the trunks are 3 in number the c5 and c6 root join to form the upper trunk root c7 forms the middle trunk and root c8 and t1 join to form the lower trunk now each trunk which are 3 in number divides into the ventral and dorsal divisions which supplies the anterior and posterior aspects of the limb these divisions join to form the cords now let's see about cords cords are also 3 in number they are lateral cord medial cord and posterior cord the lateral cord is formed by the ventral divisions of the upper and middle trunk so its root value will be c5 c6 and c7 now the medial cord is formed by the ventral division of the lower trunk so its root value will be c8 and t1 now since the posterior cord is formed by the dorsal divisions of all the three trunks so its root value will be c5 and c6 with some exceptions now let's talk about the branches branches generally arises from roots trunks and cords first let us see about the branches of the roots 
Number one is the nerve to serratus anterior, which is also called long thoracic nerve. And its root value is C5, C6 and C7, which supplies serratus anterior muscle, which is the key muscle for overhead abduction. Number two, nerve to rhomboids, which is also called dorsal scapular nerve. And its root value is C5, which supplies rhomboid major and minor muscles responsible for retraction of shoulder girdle. Number 3. Branches to longus coli and scalene muscles, whose root value is C5, C6, C7 and C8. Number 4. Branch to phrenic nerve, whose root value is C4. Phrenic nerve is the sole motor nerve supply of thoracoabdominal diaphragm which carries afferent fibers from mediastinal pleura, fibrous pericardium, and part of the parietal peritoneum. Now, now let's see the branches of the trunks. Branches arise only from upper trunk. Number one is suprascapular and number two is knob to soft clavius. Since the branches are from upper trunk, so both Root value will be C5 and C6. Suprascapular supplies supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles, and not to subclavius supplies small subclavius muscles, and it may give a root for phrenic nerve. Now let's see about the branches of cords. First, lateral cord. Lateral cord root value is C5, C6 and C7. So all of its branches root value will also be same. We can remember the branches of lateral cord by using mnemonics LML. From L it is lateral pectoral nerve. From M it is musculocutaneous nerve. And from L it is lateral root of median nerve. Lateral pectoral nerve supplies pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. Musculocutaneous nerve supplies muscles of front of forearm which are coracobrachialis, both the heads of biceps brachii and the brachialis muscles. We will talk about the lateral root of median nerve later. Now let's see medial cord. The root value of medial cord is C8 and T1 but it has one exception which is online nerve whose root value is C7, C8 and T1. We can remember the branches of medial cord by using mnemonic 3 mom. That is first it will be the branches from 3M then U then M. First one is medial pectoral nerve. Second one is medial cutaneous nerve of arm. Third one is medial cutaneous nerve of forearm. Fourth, ulnar nerve. And fifth, medial root of median nerve. So, medial pectoral nerve also supplies pectoralis major and minor, which is same as lateral pectoral nerve. Now, let us talk about medial cutaneous nerve of arm as well as forearm. Both carries sensory impulses from small area of medial side of arm and large area of medial side of forearm respectively. Now the ulnar nerve supplies one and half muscles of the front of forearm and also 15 intrinsic muscles of palm. Now we will talk about the lateral and medial root of median nerve. Here the lateral root of median nerve and the medial root of median nerve both joins to form the median nerve. Median nerve is the chief nerve of muscles of front of forearm and of thinner eminence. Since the lateral root of median nerve root value is C5, C6 and C7 and medial root of median nerve root value is C8 and T1. So the root value of median nerve will be C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. Now let's talk about posterior cord. 
We can remember the branches of posterior cord by using mnemonics ulnar. But N will be before L. Now, the root value of posterior cord will be C5 and C6, but with two exceptions. Not to latissimus dorsi, root value will be C6, C7, and C8, whereas radial nerve will be C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. So, number one branch is upper subscapular nerve. Number two is nerve to latissimus dorsi, which is also called thoraco dorsal nerve. Number three is lower subscapular nerve. Number four is axillary nerve or circumflex nerve. Number five is radial nerve. So the upper subscapular nerve supplies subscapularis, which is multipenate muscle. And nerve to latissimus dorsi supplies to latissimus dorsi muscle. And the lower subscapular nerve supplies subscapularis and teres major, whereas axillary nerve supplies deltoid and teres minor muscle. And radial nerve supplies triceps brachii and 12 muscles of back of forearm. Radial nerve is the thickest branch of brachial plexus. Now let's see about the blood supply of brachial plexus. It is also called lifeline of brachial plexus. We can remember by using the mnemonics such as VTST. From B it is vertebral artery. From T it is thyrocervical trunk with its branches. From S it is subscapular. And from T it is transfer cervical artery. Now let's see about the sympathetic innervation. The sympathetic nerves of the upper limb are derived from the spinal segment T2 to T6 and the vasoconstrictor fibers which supplies arteries emerges from T2 and T3 spinal segment. Now let's see about the preganglionic fiber and postganglionic fibers. The preganglionic fibers arise from the lateral horn cells and emerge from spinal cord through ventral nerve roots. Passes through the white rami communicants to reach sympathetic chain, ascends within the chain and ends in the middle cervical, inferior cervical and first thoracic ganglia. And the postganglionic fibers Middle cervical ganglion pass through great MIM communicants to reach root C5 and C6. Again, the postganglionic fibers from the inferior cervical ganglion pass through the same root to reach root C7 and C8. And the postganglionic fiber from the first thoracic sympathetic ganglion pass through Gray MI communicants to reach root T1. The arteries of skeletal muscles are dilated by sympathetic activity. Now let's see the figure. Now we will talk about the sympathetic innervation. So the preganglionic sympathetic fiber arises from the lateral horn cells and emerges from spinal cord through the ventral nerve root. It passes through the white ramus communicants to reach sympathetic chain, ascends within the chain and ends in the middle cervical, inferior cervical and first thoracic ganglia. Now the postganglionic sympathetic fiber from the middle cervical ganglion pass through the gray ramus communicants to reach root C5 and C6 and the postganglionic fiber from the inferior cervical ganglion pass through the same root to reach the root C7 and C8 
and the postganglionic fibers from the first thoracic sympathetic ganglion passes through the gray rami communicants to reach root t1 now for the skin the nerves are vasomotor which constricts the arterioles of skin pseudomotor which increases the sweat secretion and pilomotor which contracts the erector pylorum muscle to cause erection of the hair now we will try to understand the brachial plexus by this figure so the brachial plexus is made up of roots trunks divisions cords and branches so here are the roots c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 so the root c5 and c6 forms the upper trunk root c7 forms the middle trunk and root c8 and t1 forms the lower trunk this each trunk give the ventral and dorsal branches which ultimately joins to form the following cords so the lateral cord is formed by the union of ventral divisions of the upper and middle trunk whereas the medial cord is formed by the ventral division of the lower trunk and the posterior cord is formed by the dorsal division of the all three trunks now we'll see about the branches of the following cords first let's see about the lateral cord so here it is lateral pectoral nerve then musculocutaneous nerve then lateral root of median nerve now medial cord the branches of medial cord are medial pectoral nerve medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of forearm ulnar nerve and medial root of median nerve now let's see about the posterior cord its branches are upper subscapular nerve nerve to latissimus dorsi lower subscapular nerve axillary nerve or circumflex nerve and radial nerve here the lateral root and medial root of median nerve joins together to form the median nerve so here we finished about the brachial plexus i hope you if you guys find my video useful then please like share and subscribe thank you